right, welcome back to the In the Box recap show. Florida Panthers fans, Panthers stay hot. 4-0 win over the Chicago Blackhawks back at home at the FLA Live Arena. I'm Alex Baumgartner, joined with Jamie Goldman. Florida Panthers, Sergey Rovrovsky started the game, won the game, got another shutout this season. That's his 33rd win of the year, and he looked locked in. I don't think I've seen him this locked in all season. What did you think about Bob's game, Jamie? Yeah, um, probably the best game Bob's had all year. Uh, stopped every puck that came his way. Dominating performance start to finish. Um, great to see Bob bounce back, especially after a little bit of a shaky performance against Montreal the other night. Um, comes in tonight, shuts the door, no goals allowed. Um, 4 nothing win. The whole team really looked, really looked solid top to bottom, but obviously the star of the show tonight was Bobrovsky with the shutout. And a couple milestones tonight. First of all, Alexander Barkov once again hits 30 goals in a season. He gets two goals against Chicago, so he's at 31 on the year. Jonathan Huberto has a sole possession of the NHL single season all-time assist record by a left winger with 71. He hit 70 last game. He's at 71 now. There's still 15 games left in the season, so staying healthy. Knock on wood, he absolutely demolishes that record. Ryan Lomberg, ninth goal of the season. He stays hot. In his last six games played, because remember, he had a couple games out with injury when they were on the road. His last six games played, I believe he has five goals. He scored twice last game, scored once in Toronto in his homecoming, scored again tonight, uh, scored way back against Ottawa, March 3rd, I believe, too. Ryan Lomberg, he was an ECHL player. Played in the AHL for most of his career. Joins the Florida Panthers last season. Really gets the jump this year. And he's taken his opportunity and hasn't looked back. Yeah, you got to absolutely love his story. Like you mentioned, ECHL guy. He's grinded his way through the minor leagues. Finally getting his shot in the NHL. And he's absolutely doing everything he possibly can. Um, he um, he got some time with one of the top lines tonight. He played with Drew and Huberto. And he really, um, he really fit in perfect. Um, he scored. He scored that goal, um, and he was just active the whole night offensively. He's so fast. He's so quick, uh, especially when he gets the puck coming in the neutral zone. He just moves so fast and just creates that energy coming into the zone. And, yeah, you mentioned Barkov, 30-goal um, season. He had two tonight. He looks great. Um, Huberto uh, fed him one of those, so that was great to see him get the, uh, get the record and uh, have Barkov get his 30th goal of the year on that one. Again, dominating performance from the Cats tonight. Uh, Sam Reinhardt hit his 40th assist of the season. That kind of flew under the radar. Another guy that had a big performance was Gustav Forsling. One goal, one assist. Um, he, you know, last year when Ekblad went out, he was playing pretty much most of the minutes as a defenseman, him and Uyghur. This year, I think he's been the best defenseman after Ekblad went out because Uyghur still... I think Weir had a better game today, but Gustav Forsling really kind of just stepped up. He's playing on that top line now with Weir and just the speed he has, the way he can jump off into the rush. Teams can't stop him when you got a guy that fast that has pretty decent hands and is just very smart. He'll shoot the puck. Um, he'll move the puck. Gustav Forsling, that's a steal of a contract. I feel like we say it every single time, but Come playoff time, that two-way defenseman mold he's kind of running now because the takeaways are there as well, penalty killing. He's easily a defenseman that would play on the top four of every team in the NHL, in my opinion. Yeah, he's been great this year. Um, he's really stepped up, like you mentioned, when Ek Ekblad went out. Um, I feel like he's one of the most underrated players on the roster. Um, there's so much talent on this team top to bottom, but when you look at what Forsling has done for us, um, and he's done it kind of quietly. You know, you don't really hear many people talking about him. Last season, it was all about Yandel and how bad he was and blah, blah, blah. And then this season, Uyghurs getting all the hype, whether it be good or bad. People aren't really talking about Forsling back there, but he's been consistent. He's been solid. He's putting up points. He's good defensively. He's doing everything you could possibly ask for him. Um, he's been great. Yeah, and Claude Giroux still hasn't scored a goal yet for the Panthers, but it's kind of funny. When you have a guy that you just traded for, hasn't scored a goal yet, but there's really nothing wrong with his game. Um, penalty kill, he's jumping up on those two-on-ones with Barkov. He's getting takeaways. 
Um, not the greatest night tonight in the face-off circle, I believe. But before that, I think he won 40 draws in four his first four games of the Panther, according to uh, Randy Moeller. So, I mean, despite not scoring, Claude Giroux just makes his team even more dangerous, and he doesn't look out of place. Yeah, not out of place at all. Um, the goals might not be coming, but that's not a cause for concern. Although he is mostly known as a goal scorer, but he still brings so much to this team, his energy, his veteran savviness. He has had a couple assists. And when you watch the tape, like you can see how well he fits in and how quick and how smart of a player he is. He's a great fit for this team. And even though he hasn't scored yet, I would imagine the goals are going to come and the assists have already started to come. Sky's the limit for this team. Yeah, and for a smaller player, his whole career, he's been really strong on the puck, and it's hard to bounce him off. Um, this is what happens when you have an elite, you know, player like him, a thousand games in the NHL, can win you draws, can play on the wing, can kill penalties, can play power play. He's the total package. And when you have a guy like that come playoff time, you know, as you said, the sky's the limit. Quickly before we uh, wrap it up, it's a little scoreboard watching, as even though the Panthers did get a pretty big win tonight. Um, around the Atlantic and around the Eastern Conference. No one really helped him out. Boston's up 8-1 against the Devils at the time of this recording. So Bruins are going to get another two points. Toronto took down the Winnipeg Jets 7-3. So they're going to get another two points. And the uh, Carolina Hurricanes did win. So 4-0 against Montreal. It's another two points. Tampa isn't in action tonight. But um, Panthers sit atop the division with 98. Boston moves into 89 points. Toronto, 91, Tampa, 90. Uh, that cushion is going to help because you need to keep winning these games. It's going to get a lot closer towards the end of the year when you got to play Toronto two more times and you got a couple more games against some of these um, Atlantic Division teams. Yeah, can't slow down now. Playoffs right around the corner. You got about four or five weeks. Um, Boston showing no, no signs of slowing down. Toronto's been hot. Um, that Eastern Conference is loaded. That Atlantic Division is loaded. Um, you can't slow down right now. If anything, you got to use these next couple weeks to really ramp yourselves up and get ready for the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, come playoff time, you really don't know who you're going to play. There's honestly, I have a weird feeling it might be Tampa again, just looking at the the wild card race. And if Car Carolina gets a little bit of a jump, they get one more point, say Tampa slips, Toronto slips, someone slips, you know, you got two teams that have really good playoff experience, and then you got another team in Toronto who is, um, you know, hungry. So you're either playing a Washington, who won the Cup recently, Tampa, who's won the last two Cups, Boston, who's been to multiple Stanley Cup finals in the last decade, or a team like you who hasn't won a playoff series in almost 20 years. Um, there's going to be a lot to play for coming up very soon. Yeah, nobody said it was going to be easy. Um, this is the time where you know, great teams come together and um, got a couple weeks here, finish out the regular season and then playoff times are going to come. Um, we don't know who we're going to get yet. Could be Carolina, could be Tampa, could be, could be a Washington, like you mentioned. Um, but whoever it is, Florida's got to be ready. And I really think these next couple weeks are crucial to get the lineup right and get themselves ready for the playoffs. Absolutely. Florida has got to be ready, but also Florida is the team to beat in the Eastern conference. That's why they're in first place. That's why they have historically one of the best goal scoring seasons since the 96 penguins. That's why they have the best goal differential in the NHL. And that's why they're one of the best teams at home. Uh, very thankful for you guys to be watching this in the box recap. I know a lot of you guys have been talking to us saying that you're enjoying this. So we're going to be doing it more and more as it picks up towards the playoffs. We'll be bringing back the in the box show as well. Longer segments. We'll have Shane. We'll have Caitlin on there. We'll have Manny jump in every once in a while too. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe. I'm going to tweet a little bit of these promos out as well. So you get a little bit of snippets on Twitter every time we release one of these videos. And make sure you follow us right there on the Fifth Line 5R Twitter. From Alex and Jamie, we'll see you guys next time. The Florida Panthers, 4-0 win over the Chicago Blackhawks.